If you're new to Twinmotion and looking to improve your renders in the shortest timelines possible, this video is for you. Today, I'm sharing my top five Twinmotion rendering tip to take you from amateur to absolute professional in a matter of minutes. Assuming you have the latest version of Twinmotion installed, which for me is 2025.1 Preview Edition, I'm gonna walk you through some incredible beginner tips. The first thing you wanna do before starting anything in Twinmotion is creating your first image. Now, if you come down to media and hit that first image button, you want to work through all of your camera settings first. You wanna set up your scene before you start changing materials because the second your lighting, your environment changes, all of those colors and textures you work so hard to make work are no longer gonna be exactly as you originally imagined and you're gonna to have to do it all again. So create your first image, come to camera, set your focal length and then move to the environment. The environment takes us to tip number two. You of course have Dynamic Sky and HDRI Sky. With Twinmotion 2025, we have the brand new added feature of volumetric clouds. Now scrolling down, you'll see volumetric clouds with a slider below that can easily be adjusted to create the perfect cloud formation. Now volumetric clouds are only available on the Dynamic Sky and not the HDRI. Once you have some experience in Twinmotion, definitely look into volumetric clouds and setting up the perfect scene. But until then, go to HDRI and import a custom HDRI Sky. This can come from anywhere. It can come direct from HDRI Skies online for free or any other website that you like. It can come from within Twinmotion in the HDRI environments under Skies and then picking something you like. Either way, these HDRI Skies are going to create the best environment for any beginner. Once you've found a HDRI Sky you like, drag and drop it into your scene. Then and only then should you move on to the next part. Step three is changing your global illumination settings under render to Lumen. Lumen provides real time, high quality ray tracing directly inside Twinmotion. If you're not running a Mac and you're on a high end Windows PC, then you should also turn on Path Tracer so it takes your renders to that absolute next level. If you're doing interior renders, once you're on Lumen, it's often going to go quite dark in your scene and in your space. So the first thing you want to do is increase your view distance under Lumen to a higher number. Now, that higher number could be 7,000, 10,000, 100,000 meters until you find the perfect setting. Generally, increasing this number is going to allow the Lumen distance to travel further and therefore make your interior scenes less dark. The fourth tip to improving all of your renders straight away without having to do any extra work is simply coming to image, output size, and absolute maximum. If your computer can export higher than 8K, a 16K, go for it. You're going to be able to produce the best images possible. Once they're exported, downscale them to a more manageable file size and make sure you're only exporting at 8K when you're 100% certain the scene works well. Generally, I'd recommend exporting as a 4K, it doesn't take too long, and then exporting as the highest file size you can without Twinmotion crashing. Lastly, to improve any of your renders, I'm going to need to switch over to my Dynamic Sky to give a little bit more punch to this scene. So if I jump over to Dynamic Sky and simply change to Sunrise Glow preset, adjust my north offset so I can see the sun in the very, very background, we then want to come into camera and scroll down to local exposure. Playing with the highlights and shadows is truly going to enhance all of your renders. So you can see here, if I slide my highlights down, that entire sky and everything blown out fades away. Or if I lift it up, it glows a little bit more. I find that I do a lot of renders with white homes and dark surrounds. So to be able to fine tune that to make it appear exactly as you needed to and as it would in real life, the local exposure custom sliders is absolutely key. With highlights dialed in, we can then adjust our shadows. So for instance, to sliding shadows to zero, it brings out all those shadows and we can see everything that's in the darkness. Otherwise, we can drop that all the way to 1.0 and take away those shadows. It all depends on the scene you're looking for. If you're looking for some residential real estate style photos where the shadows basically disappear, I absolutely hate them, then you're looking at shadows at zero, but otherwise something a little bit more moody, a bit more architectural, but yet still able to see what's going on, you're probably looking at shadows in the 0.7 mark for this particular example. Now let's go ahead and export the image that we've discussed with those five minor details and the basic image you would have received if you just hit the plus button and created your first image without making any changes whatsoever. 
Now the best part about this example while it exports is the fact there's nothing actually included in Twinmotion. I haven't gone and modeled a house, I haven't added any texture. This is purely within Twinmotion. It doesn't matter what your project looks like, it doesn't matter what you're rendering and exporting, this will make every project better. All right, let's look at them side by side. On the left, we obviously have our finely tuned, adjusted twin motion image. And on the right hand side, we have the basic boring default image that you would have received if you just hit the plus button and went to export. What you see on the right hand side is of course, we have a lot more detail, a lot more texture. We have a really nice dynamic sky in the background, which could be a HDRI for you as well. We can see all of the shadows, all the lines, the textures. We haven't touched any of the textures whatsoever, but the quality of the image is just so much crisper and overall significantly more appealing. Compared to that of the right hand image, which is blurry around the edges of the sphere, zooming all the way in, you'll be able to see that better. Comparing that to our 8K export, we have much crisper, much cleaner lines around. And overall, we end up with an image that is marketable, presentable, and significantly more professional. Anyway, that's all for me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below and like always, I'll see you next week.